please scream and yell at any point in time, you guys, all right? Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Lisa M. Arreguin. And I'm the author of a little book called The Crazy Brave Songwriter, a spiritual guide to creative songwriting. I am a super creative and an entrepreneurial optimist. I love music seriously and I write books courageously. But mostly I am dedicated to artists so that they can find the beauty inside of them. We love music and music defines our culture and it defines who we are. And artists very often feel a bit lost. They at times don't know how to get from the beginning of a song to the end of a song. And so my heart really is to write, to have written this book for them. I wrote The Crazy Brave Songwriter as a commentary and observation and a conversation about what it takes to create something from nothing. Although this book is about and for songwriters, I have come to understand that all creative people go through seven steps of creating, which I've outlined in the book. How do I know that there are seven steps? Because I've carefully listened to hundreds of artists speak to me for many years about their struggles, their triumphs, and their joy. I'm also an artist myself, so I understand. So in my little book here, um, the title is Crazy Brave. So let's start with crazy first, the crazy part first, and why I titled it that. For most artists, creatives, and singers, we feel crazy. Anybody relate? We feel crazy. So why do we feel so crazy all the time? I believe part of that is because we've been told we were crazy, because we wear clothes that are a little different, because we think a little different, because we cut our hair and color our hair in different and strange ways. But really the truth is that we have come to the planet to give a message and that we are wired a certain way. And that is our giftedness. It's not our crazy. No one tells us how to figure out our craziness and why we are wired the way that we are. But over time and through observation and counsel, I've discovered a few things that seem to ring true. In the positive, and some of you may recognize this in yourself if you're creative people, in the positive, they are dreamers. They feel everything around them all the time. Can I get an amen? That's right. They are highly intuitive. They have the capacity to experience an expanded sense of spiritual connectedness as it relates to their art. They are extremely generous people who care deeply about others. They have a large capacity for universal compassion, and they often have their pulse on global matters. They are divergent, out-of-the-box thinkers and are able to come up with answers that other people in the room had not even considered. They are intellectually smart and brilliant, not accurately measured by the Unified School Districts of America. You know what I'm saying? Right. They have a childlike naivete and innocence about them. They are natural risk takers. They have a message to share and a strong desire to share it. They have a great deal of physical energy when they are engaged in their art and working on a new project. They are easily bored if they are not working on some creative activity. And they have a great appreciation for beauty. Some of the challenges that we have because we're wired to create some of the challenges we have, and let me list a few of those. Creative people have difficulty sleeping and tend to have lots of energy in the middle of the night. Hello, right? Registering at a higher rate than the general population, creative people demonstrate a sliding scale of psychological mood disorders, including, including mild anxiety, ADD, depression, and bipolar disorder. And these challenges can stretch over a lifetime. 
They can have pervasive feelings of low self-worth. They have bouts with creative perfectionism, not stopping until a creative project is done and complete. They, have, they can self-sabotage creative projects just before they are finished. They can have ongoing unstable relationship difficulties. And although gregarious, friendly, and kind, they rejuvenate best by being alone. They are highly sensitive children who continue to react deeply to childhood wounds. They are naturally rebellious, and they don't like rules and regulations. Right? <laughs> right. They feel different than other people, people and sometimes deeply misunderstood. They can feel unorganized, overwhelmed, and out of step with society. And they are sad when they are not able to engage in their art. No two artists are quite the same. If you desire to have a rich, long-lasting creative life, then self-understanding is key as you seek to heal the parts of your personality that resist your creative spirit and praise the parts that make you equipped for the crazy, brave journey ahead. But despite our crazy natures and the gift of music in our souls, we are called out into a world to do something that often no one else understands. Tonight, I'd like to walk you through some of the main ideas in the book. There are seven steps that I've identified for creative people in order to help them cope and understand themselves better. We won't go through all the steps, but I'd like to begin to walk you through a few of the important parts. So let's begin with step number one, the spark of inspiration. I'm going to read to you a poem, and I'd like Brittany to come up. We have some guests, some of my guests, friends, and my beautiful daughter is going to come up and sing a song for us. <laughs> so in talking about the spark of inspiration that all creative people get, here's a poem. A flicker turns into a fire, an angry emotion grows into rage. A happy thought evolves upward into joy. Pay attention to the spark of creativity and inspiration as it arrives at your doorstep. It contains a bigger, more expanded idea within it. Dreams, 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 dreams. dreams. What do your secrets mean? Even when the stars come falling to the bottom of the sea. Try to run, but you can't stop crawling Swaddled by the beer Trapped under all that pressure Like a pearl in the dust You're a buried treasure A diamond in the rough Drifting flower, more than a precious fair. After a songwriter is sparked with this new information, then it takes it, it's time to listen, which is step two. So I'm going to read a little, a, few, a little bit from the book here, on page 28. The act of deep listening involves a sacred connection that is naturally therapeutic. Counselors use deep listening to help clients get to the root of a problem. Teachers use it to serve students. And mothers use it to listen to what their children need. You can use it for deeper spiritual understanding within yourself as you seek to write honestly and then to extend your song to others who might be healed by the music you create. I want you to take a listen to this next piece and this next artist that's coming up to the stage. There won't be lyrics to this song that you understand, and that's done on purpose. But I want you to listen to what you feel when she sings. 
and she can come on up now. Let's welcome Shelly to the stage. an emotional chord, right? So when we're listening as songwriters and creative people, we're listening for it to touch us emotionally. That's how we begin to create our art, and that's our superpower. Really, it is. Our emotional um, center. Thank you, Shelley. Beautiful. <laughs> After the spark of inspiration and listening, what comes next? Now it's time to get to the nitty-gritty of the creative process. What helps us write? What tools do we use? As in all things artistic, there is form. And so I'm going to ask my delightful husband, Joey Arreguin, <laughs> to come up to the keyboard for a moment. Songs are made up of five basic building blocks. So we're going to have Joey on the piano kind of uh, describe some of those for us. First, there's an intro. That's an intro, right? <laughs> then there is the verse, the A section. where the story is told. Then the next section is the chorus or the hook. the bridge comes after the hook. Bridges are interesting. They kind of change the mood and they really do connect two parts of a song and that's what their, their use is to give us a, a little bit of a rest before we get back into the hook again. And then there's the ending, the coda.
So at the beginning, we were talking about crazy. So let's talk about a little bit now about bravery. What does it take to be brave as a creative artist? And when I say artist, I want you to also understand I'm really talking about photographers, filmmakers, um, painters, writers. We all go through the same process from beginning to end. So to illustrate this point, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, so I'm going to read from the book. Melian is a talented songwriter and performer who learned this firsthand. She learned about music. On one memorable evening, several difficult personal events occurred, and seemingly all at once. She was in Los Angeles and stopped by a bar to have a drink with a friend. She parked her car in front of, in front of the bar and spent about an hour inside. When she returned to the car, she discovered to her horror that it had been broken into. Everything was gone, her laptop, her purse, and her phone. The most devastating realization was that her journals with all her lyrics and personal experiences had been taken too. On the day she was robbed, Melian was in the process of finishing up her first album. She counted her lyric book and personal journals as her most precious career possessions, cataloging her list of unfinished song ideas. The book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kurosaki was also in the car, but for some unknown reason, it was the only item that wasn't taken. Eerily, during the theft, the cover of the book had been defaced. The Rich Dad title on the cover had been scratched out, and the poor dad title of the cover had been left intact. She thought it strange that the thief had took everything else in her car but seemed to have enough time to deface the cover of her book. It was only when she called to make a police report that she looked up at the name of the bar and gasped. The bar was called Criminals. Just two days later, at two in the morning, she began to write about the humiliation and the pain of losing the things that meant so much to her, the cherished pieces of her heart written down in lyrics and melody. She wrote about poverty and the wealth of the spirit and how no one can take anything away from you, even if they do steal from you in the middle of the night. She wrote about enduring tough times and resilience and experiences she had endured. She called the song Criminals, and talked candidly in her lyrics about the irony of the name of the establishment, the meaninglessness of physical things that are lost, and the paradox of being wealthy in life yet impoverished in spirit. As the crisis began to make sense to her spiritually, she realized that she had an opportunity to speak honestly about what she felt without pretense or sugar-coated optimism. By communicating this to her song in her songwriting, she automatically became a vehicle for change, whether she knew it or not. At a gig just a week later, she performed Criminals in front of a crowd of fans who had never heard her music before. There were cheers and laughter as she made a real connection with the audience. She was given a standing ovation at the end. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Melian up to the stage. Somebody broke into my whip and took all my stuff. So of course I flipped and cussed, busted through the back, took my sack, my shoes, my clothes, Michael Paul's bag, my journal, my clothes, MacBook, look, they even took my fake ice, that's cold. Even my phone gone so wrong, left it unattended 30 minutes, that's too long. If you know LA, that's too long. My doors were locked, they must have kicked the sock The window wind, plus the lights on the block were dim Cops came, filed a rapport I got a feeling I just got robbed by the poor In front of villains Yeah, yeah, uh, uh In front of villains Yeah, tell y'all what happened I started crying, I was dying inside All the work I put in and never backed on my drive Damn, around five grand worth of that night took my pride too Was tripping, caught me slipping, chilling Sipping at villains While villains outside of the building made a killing Ugh. Enemies on the come up You lucky I ain't run up and see you sucker Whoever did it, I ain't kidding Karma coming heavy, are you ready for the rage? From no one who reigns, my pain is felt I knelt and prayed 
devil is a lie, try to take my joy away He just added fire to a burning flame uh, More of the story, losers never win They could take away possessions, but not your blessings Get up when you fall, even if it takes a while Stay dope, have hope, smile in front of villains Hey, hey, you guys say with me, where did this all happen? In front of villains, okay, okay I want you to keep your joy and smile, what? So although, although we feel crazy at times and have been called crazy by others, our art requires that we strive to understand our spirits and to stand up and be brave, to continue despite difficulties, stops and random starts. So you have to run into battle just like a soldier because you have a higher calling and a higher purpose. The songwriter's prime working capital is given out in hundreds of ways, as a delicate lyric, a heart-stopping melodic line, or a driving, passionate guitar solo with a heavy message. We offer what we have in our hearts, and the commodity of love pours from us as an offering, as a money exchange, and as a prayer. Music and life are a mathematical exchange of giving and receiving. As McCartney writes, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Maybe that's why we talk about love so much in songs that we write. Having love, losing love, trusting in love, making love, getting love, stopping love, and my personal favorite, hating love, <laughs> and of course, being in love. My wish is that the lessons in this book have helped you understand, creative people, the power of your center so that you can find crazy bravery in yourself to do what has been placed in your heart. The rules of the journey never change as you mirror your life in the songs and the creative endeavors that you write. Take this opportunity for self-growth and for healing. Your life is so poetic, so look within. Your life is a song that tells the stories of the ocean and the moon and the stars. And your life is a metaphor for the music you create. You are a hero on a quest for music and challenges and allies and vision. Your mission, if you would choose to accept it as a not impossible mission, but possible mission, is to share your dreams and gifts through the power of connection with others. Remain vigilant and steady and creatively strong by lovingly giving attention and time to your creative spirit every day. Be crazy brave, everyone. So I want to thank you guys for coming. I want to all the performers, if they can please come up to the stage for a moment, please. So on all creative journeys, as this has been for me tonight, you meet a cast of characters. And they will be your collaborators and your friends and designed to help you finish what you started. Sent to you synchronistically with great love to assist you, applaud you, and help you over the tough times, just as my, as my friends have done for me tonight. So thank you guys. I love you very much. This was awesome, right? <laughs> All right. All right.